In every movie, in every play, in every story, there's usually a lead, a protagonist, if you will. Then there's a supporting cast who get mentioned in the credits, but maybe in smaller print. And then there are the minor characters, the ones whose names you can barely read on the screen. The ones whose names are in 10-point print. You know, police officer number one, woman in cafeteria, college student number four. And every good story is about the lead, the hero or heroine, usually on some sort of journey surrounded by the supporting characters, Jesus and the apostles. Perfect example. And as the credits roll, you see the supporting characters, demoniac number one, woman with a hemorrhage, man born blind, woman at the well, rich young man, so on and so forth. Minor characters that populate the gospel. Sometimes we know their names, Zacchaeus, Caiaphas, Elizabeth, Nicodemus. The people who populate the stories we hear week after week. But there is one family in the gospel whose relationship with Jesus takes more than just a minor or even a supporting role. We don't know what the actual relationship is, but we do know that somehow they were very close to Jesus. They were friends in the most intimate sense of that word. They were a family who lived in Bethany, which was just a couple of miles east of Jerusalem, on the slope of the Mount of Olives in what is today part of the West Bank. And this family was composed of at least three siblings, at least those are the ones we know about, Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. The Gospel of Luke, which we heard today, describes a visit of Jesus to the house of Martha and Mary. In the Gospel of John, Jesus is having dinner at the home of Simon the leper just before Passover. Martha is serving. Martha's always serving. Lazarus, whom Jesus had just raised from the dead, was among those at table reclining with Jesus. Now, try to figure that out. Your brother was dead, now he's alive, now he's having dinner with you. Mary comes and pours nard, an expensive perfume, on Jesus' feet and wipes his feet with her hair. They must have been very good friends of Jesus because when Lazarus was sick, Martha and Mary sent for him. And when Jesus arrived, four days after Lazarus died, Jesus was himself deeply troubled and moved, and he wept. Clearly, these were people Jesus cared for intensely, profoundly, that he would weep at the death of his friend and then try to console his sisters. Minor characters, all, who had major roles to play in the life of Jesus. And we know a bit about the sisters. As I just mentioned, Martha was serving at the dinner at which Mary anointed Jesus' feet. In the episode with Lazarus, when Martha had heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him. But Mary sat at home. And then there's today's gospel story. One where I think Martha gets a bum rap. Let me qualify this. Nobody who knows me well has ever accused me of being Mary, rather than being Martha. Most jobs I've held, most ministries I've been involved with, just about in every way, I've lived my life in what we shall call maybe more active than contemplative, if that's how you want to characterize it. So I'm biased, I'm very biased, because I very much identify with Martha. So when I hear people talk about this scripture passage as Jesus playing down the active life and extolling the contemplative, it drives me crazy. Because that means that if your thing is action, whether feeding the hungry or preaching to a congregation, watch out. You're active, you can lose your soul that way. Because the perfect Christian way is contemplation. Simply sitting at the feet of the Lord, lost in admiration, lost in wonder. But in many ways, it goes deeper than that. Martha probably wanted to honor Jesus with an elaborate meal. But Jesus reminds her that it's more important to listen to what he has to say. That the proper service of Jesus is attention to his instruction and not necessarily provision for his physical needs. It reminds me of the scene where his mother and relatives could not reach him because of the crowds. Someone cries out, Your mother and brothers are standing outside wanting to see you. 
And what does Jesus say? Well, he says, my mother and brothers are those who hear the word of God and do it. So I don't think Jesus rebukes Martha at all. I think he simply and very gently chides her. Because her cooking and serving are not out of place. Jesus does not reject it. His is a soft reminder that service which forgets to listen is less than what it ought to be. Listening to Jesus' word then becomes the better portion. Because this is a lasting good that will never be taken away from the listener. So I don't think that the danger is in serving, not at all. The danger is a service that has no time for listening, for listening to what God might be saying to us, saying to us how, when, where. In the quiet of our hearts, whenever Jesus says to us what he said to his disciples when they were so busy, they didn't even have time to eat. Come away to a deserted place, Jesus would invite them. Come away to a deserted place and pray and rest a while. I think today's gospel can be said to be addressed to us Christians who are expected to be in a traditional phrase, phrase, contemplatives in action. In action, not retiring from the world, but actively engaged in it, thoughtfully, respectfully, reflectively, prayerfully. Women and men who are ceaselessly taking a long and loving look at the real and doing this while we are at the feet of Jesus. For only at the feet of Jesus, only in contemplation, does our action become Christ-like. The challenge is to link Martha and Mary in our own lives, to live in that intersection of action and contemplation, to be of service to our fellow human beings, guided by the example and love of Jesus. The same Jesus who cared deeply for his friend, who wept at his loss, who rejoiced at the good news of salvation. I still wonder how Jesus met Martha, Mary, and Lazarus, and what they had in common that they became such good friends. Maybe they're not minor characters at all, but paradigms for each one of us facets of who we are, invited to live in relationship with each other and with a Jesus who loves us all.